Kong Sathopoulos and Josh Vegan come together in an incredible podcast, Grow, Scale, Master, an energetic approach to drive progress, master skills, build strengths, and put the strategy back into rapid business and personal success. Backed by real-world experience in rapid scale, to playing the long-term game of business, it's the story of all the lessons learned on the journey to mastery. Be inspired, renew your energy, and chase the future with Grow, Scale, Master. Con, one of the great skills is the ability to be able to hit refresh. And, you know, I, I get to work with so many different people at different stages. And sometimes it's like, you know, people are tired in their careers. Other times people have gone through a very traumatic event. Mm-hmm. Other times like a life event actually occurred and they actually, or they're forced into a position of actually having to hit refresh. And, and I like to do it by choice rather than by chance. Yeah. And, you know, like, like I'm going to hit refresh on this. Yeah, and you're not has, forced to because you've, you've hit a wall or you're sick or you've yeah. had a life event. Yeah. And I stole the term from Google where they uh, were calling sunset on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, great. So if that's no longer my thing, I'm going to call sunset on that. Yeah. And I'm going to go and call sunrise on that. Yeah. And I, and I kind of like that. It's just a different way of thinking. So what is really important inside of your life is that you have a feeling of progress, that you're building towards something bigger than yourself. And whether or not that's um, helping your children to grow up, um, having a really beautiful, loving marriage, building a great business, building income, building asset base, making impact inside of your community, you know, knowing that you're actually making a difference around what it is that you do. Then, then to me, that feeling of progress is a really important part. And it comes down to the foundational idea that, you know, what do you love? Now, now Con, I love growth. Uh, because it's expansionary in nature. It brings more problems up. It brings more challenge to me. It gives me problems to solve. It allows me to create more impact, you know, with the people that I'm working with Mm. because I know that they can have more income, they can employ more people, I can make society better, I can do all of those things. So I'm not going to be the guy who's going to be down on a social housing policy. I'm going to be the guy who's going to be helping people to make money so they can buy a house, you know, so and they can build houses and provide rental properties and do all of those things. So I have an alternate view. And this is interesting because when you think about it, How does your mind actually think about hitting refresh? Hmm. Now, sometimes you are absolutely trapped by the level of thinking that you've got. So let's say, for example, you're a real estate agent and you're selling 20 houses a year. And I go out to you, okay, great. I want you to sell, I don't know, 22 houses. And, and, uh, oh, okay, great. I'm going to tweak my online Instagram ads. You know, like, and that's, and that's kind of where the mindset is at. Okay, great. So two times thinking, okay, great. What does it look like at 40 deals? Oh, geez, I'm going to lose my partner. I'm not going to be home. Okay, great. Now go 10 times. So what would it look like at 200 transactions a year? Oh, well, that whole thing breaks, doesn't it? I'm going to need an operations manager and seven opens on a Saturday. That's going to be three salespeople. So it's two plus me. I'm going to need to start thinking about a team. What what size market? Where am I going to go? What does it look like? And often the 10 times thinking is a lot easier than the two times thinking because it, it actually shows up all of the systems and all of the thinking that's going to break that you're going to need to think through very differently to get there. Yeah, I agree with that, and I think I think as well as you know the the ten x growth mindset versus the two x. Ten x is actually a lot easier than two x because mm-hmm. you're in flow, you've got momentum, you've got energy, you're relevant, you're in the marketplace, you've got market share, you've got market energy, you've got it, all those things that are going for you, right? And you're out of the box, you're correct? So because you've had to adapt and adopt to a new way of thinking and shifting that. So E Myth, Michael E Gerber, yeah, your name's in the box on marketing, sales, whatever. That's it. You mm. got it. You got it. You got it. So if you think about that. I do a really simple exercise, love, dislike, and hate. Yeah. And so- um, I do the same. I just stop. I write down everything I love doing right now. What's the stuff I'm doing that I dislike doing right now? And what are the things I'm doing right now that I fundamentally hate? I, and, call, I call them boundaries, Josh. Sure. It's like putting a boundary around the things that you're really good at. Yeah. And the things that you hate doing, but you're very good at, sometimes you have to do. Sure. Or sometimes you can outsource them, right? So sure, I just go to Kylie at the end of the month. <laughs> hey, here's a list. <laughs> yeah. Can you get some of the team to look after some of this sort of stuff? Yes. Yeah, it's not because I'm lazy, but I just know that the foundational bit of what I've got to do in the workflow to make the business run. Now, this is important. Con, if you're in a position, you know, and we've spoken about peaks and plateaus, What's the power of a new vision? You know, like that moment that you wake up and you hook onto something and you go, I'm going after that. Yeah. And it could be a new car. It could be having a better marriage. It could be being a better dad. It could be, you know what, I'm just going to become a great runner. Like, like whatever it is, how important is it to hook onto that power of a new vision? I think, um, I think you can't get that new vision, Josh, until you've had some distance and space between your old self. Think about your mobile phone. Overnight, they do a software upgrade. Mm. How often do we actually upgrade our software? Are we still pitching the same way we were in January? Because mm. the market's different. Mm-hmm. So I look at it and I go, you know, I've just come back from a couple of weeks overseas in mm. Europe and, you know, we, we were fortunate to catch up overseas. But 
I came back with a new vision because mm. I had renewed energy. Mm. I had clarity. Mm. I had distance and space that I could work on the business as opposed to working in the business. Mm. And, you know, we had a 30% growth year last year. Mm. So for me is how do I replicate that again? Mm-hmm. Now, if I, if, I, if I was having this mindset without having a break mm. or being able to create some space, mm-hmm. I'd be thinking, oh, man, I'm just exhausted, dude. We just had a record year, 30% growth. Like, sure, sure. Like, that's enough. Does that make sense? So you've got to create the energy and the time. And I'm, I'm a big believer that when the energy comes, you've got to run with it. Absolutely. And, and so this is an important conversation because, you know, knowing what's next is an important part of the journey to making sure that you can go to hit refresh. And one of the things I do is I go, what's working, what's not? Mm. So everything in our business called broken systems, that's broken, that's broken, that's broken, that's broken. Okay, great. Let's go fix it or rebuild it stronger so literally it can sustain yeah. the next level of growth that we're going after. And literally when you're thinking about it, what are the things you've got to call time on? So you know what? I've just got to call sunset on that. That's just no longer working. And we look at that all the time and I say, okay, great. I'm going to call sunset because we're just doing too much of that and we could do that a better way. Yes. And if you start thinking that way, it actually really frees up the thinking. And this is that whole idea that you've got to reduce what you're doing to improve the quality of what you're doing. You've got to simplify what's going on in your life because there's a lot of complexity and a lot of additions and you've got to make sure that you organize. Yeah. So I say to people, okay, great. So go to your mobile phone, turn off the notifications. Yeah, I've done that. Second conversation, go to your mobile phone and have two modes. Have a weekend mode and have a Monday to Friday mode. And the reason why that's important, I have a different wallpaper on my weekends yep. to what I have Monday to Friday. And that's like, it's a switching gear. Like when I wear my suit, I'm in work mode. When I'm out of my suit, I'm not in work mode. Sure. So when I come home, I have a shower to get out of work mode. Yes. And so that's an interesting part about like literally giving yourself some rituals and some routines. Con, what is the power of a new routine like? What does it do for people? Oh, at everything. I mean, it can be as simple as just making a decision to decide to get up half an hour earlier and go for a walk or hit the gym or mm. read a book or, or, or do anything that's going to be able to put you into a state where mm. you, can pe- you can perform at a peak level. Mm-hmm. But conversely, the routine is also something that can help you when you're descending from the day. Mm-hmm. So it could be a sauna, it could be an afternoon walk, it could be you know making dinner or whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. I think there are routines that are going to help you lift mm-hmm. and then help you also come back down to earth so you can have a great night's sleep or recovery. Absolutely. Sauna. Yeah, correct. Oh. Ice baths, whatever it might be. I'm not be. that extreme. Maybe no, just a no, cold shower. Yeah, but yeah, but it's but warm, <laughs> warmish. <laughs> yes. yeah. But the, the basic idea here is that literally that, you know what, as you head into a new season, and like this is a very long run for real estate agents. Well, 12 weeks. We're, we're absolutely. So September, October, November. Uh, but hang on, we've got December, January, February, March. Really, we're from August, the end of August. Yeah. Actually, right now, Josh, yeah. till end of March. Yeah. We're from now to Easter mm-hmm. next year. And this is the All run. gas, no breaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So when you start thinking about that, it's really important that you've got some routines of how I deliberately drop down and how I move back up into the performance. And this is important, like kind of about the consistency over time. Right. And I learned that literally I wanted to run a thousand Ks and I went out, ran all year and I got to the end of the year, got to Boxing Day, had a quick look in the app and I'd only run 440. So I only had to do another, I don't know, 560 <laughs> kilometers in the course of the next six days. So yeah. outside of a couple of ultras, what I realized very quickly is I wasn't consistent. But then I realized 5K a day, Monday to Friday, that's 25Ks, times that by 40 weeks. Man, that's going to get me there every day of the week. Correct. And so this is the interesting conversation is that now, if you just do and you commit to the basics, it builds over time. So it's a call session a day, an appointment a day, a listing presentation a day. Keeps Josh Vegan away. Compound interest. Right? So All it is. And just over and over and over Absolutely and over again. Absolutely agree. So when you think about that, you know, when you're hitting refresh, where are the bits where you keep on getting caught in life? Mm. So I have this little thing where I'm like, okay, imagine that you have a suit jacket on and you're running through an old kitchen, which has got all the doorknobs out on all the kitchen doors. And one of those doorknobs catches the jacket and pulls it back and almost tears it. Mm. That's what's happening in your life. I constantly keep getting caught because my car is empty. Yes. Great. Fill your car with petrol every Sunday. Correct. That's yeah, right. so, so there's it says a system thing that if you get that right, that changes. I'm constantly eating bad food. Okay, great. Guess what? Get, get it delivered, have a conversation, learn how to prepare. Use that as recovery time so then you can go and perform at your best. Um, Con, if you think a little bit about that, like improving your environment so it supports the type of person you want to become, what are some environmental changes that you could make quite quickly that would change everything, either in your workspace or your home space? I think having a plan to begin with. What is it? What's the goal that you're trying to achieve? What's the game that you, you, know, you, you want to design that you want to win? Mm. And I think more importantly about that is who's actually going to be on your advisory board that's going to keep you on track? Sure. So let's just talk 
about health and nutrition, hypothetically. You might need a nutritionist. You might need a doctor to mm -hmm. be able to check your bloods. You might mm. need a coach in a gym, mm. whatever it might be. You need to surround yourself with the people that are going to help you basically get over those hurdles. Those hurdles are generally ourselves, mm -hmm. right? So that's the first thing. I think the second thing as well is um, the environment or the space that you create. So, for example, you want to go, go to bed earlier, mm. just, you know, don't have the TV on in your room, read a book or mm -hmm. put your phone in, in another part of the, the house so you're not distracted. Mm -hmm. I think it's about how you prioritise how you want to be better. Yeah, the interesting thing is that like you've already got a list of barriers that you already inherently believe are preventing you from achieving your growth. Yeah. And you are so invested in those barriers because they've been a bit of a protection mechanism to you. Absolutely. What a good mentor will do is say, hey, Con, so what are your barriers to growth right now? Mm. Oh, you know, it's X, it's Y, it's Z. And I go, okay, great. And then they will challenge you on a few of those and literally ask you some questions to potentially find a way through. And there's that great quote from Randy Pouch in the last lecture, brick walls are there to show you how much you want what's on the other side. Yeah. Now, when I go through and I think about my house, how do I make my home feel better? So can I put in some flowers? Can I put in a new lamp? Can I do a refresh? Can I remove some things from the house? Can I get the painter to come through and paint that wall where there's a, a mark or a scuff? Can I do something to freshen up? Can I get the gardener to put in those new plants? Can I do some of those things? Can I wash the deck myself and you know give it that freshness and whatever it might need? Okay, great. In my work environment, can I just clean up the desk? Can I go and spend a bit of time in reorganization? Can I get my inbox back to zero? Can I get back in control of my SMSs? Can I get back in control of my WhatsApp? Can I update my templates about what I've actually got that I'm sending out to people to make sure my templates are seriously good. And now I want you to go and be the customer again. And I want you to actually read through the proposals that you're sending mm. and tell me if they're good. You, are they dynamic? Are you, they fresh? You know what? You've, you, you reminded me of something that David Mills, one of the, uh, the principals up in the Northern Rivers said to me once, he said, uh, every morning he has a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and he goes out into his garden and he would just pick a few weeds. Mm -hmm. I said, and he goes, that for me is, you know, very therapeutic. And I said, well, I don't get the, the correlation between having a cup of coffee and picking the weeds. He goes, but think about it. If I pick a weed every single day, then there's no weeds over a course of a week or a month. Mm -hmm. If I let the weeds take over, then it's too hard. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing is, is about consistency, about the environment and the space that you're, you're trying to create sure. and about executing that every day. It's mm -hmm. about discipline and mm -hmm. it's about consistency and turning up. There's an old school saying, you know, what are you kidding yourself about? Yeah. So if you don't feel fit, you're feeling frumpy, you're not energetic, things are dragging, you're negative, you're spiraling. Okay, great. Guess what? Change. Correct. You know, and that's that whole idea is about saying, okay, great. Put some healthy boundaries in place. Get yourself back into a better space and realize that you can become a much better quality person. Experiences that rapidly shaped you. You know, there was, um, and you might remember him, it was Richard Flint and he spoke at ARIC and it was one of the first ever that I went to. So this is probably circa 06. Right. And he, and he said, uh, I think he was maybe Canadian, maybe he wasn't, maybe he was US, but he used to wear these big like American Hawaiian shirts when he presented. And he just said this one saying, he said, you're either building towards the clarity or you're adding to the confusion. And I, and I just remember that all the time. It's like literally when someone comes in and goes, hey, Khan, maybe we can do this and this. I'm like, are they building towards the clarity <laughs> or are they adding to the confusion? And I just think about that all the time. It's like, okay, great. You know what? You know, don't have to add. Sometimes you've got to subtract to make things cleaner, better, faster. Yeah, I, um, I was at a conference a, a couple of weeks ago and uh, someone put a question on a slide up on the, uh, the presentation screen and it said this, what does your business need to look like if you made the decision to stay with it for the rest of your life? Mm -hmm. And that kind of was one of those aha moments for me, which was everything that I need to change. To, if I had to freeze time right now and this was exactly what I had to have for the rest of my life, mm. what would it look like? And I made a series of notes and that's exactly what we're trying to implement today. Something that's changing your view. So, Con, I, uh, I've had a look at it that, you know, and, and Tony Schwartz talks a lot about it, about like skinning the onion to get to the absolute core, which is the most, in, most potent part and when you, what you're really thinking about is that you've got all of these things that are coming in. And I, you know, I, I know that I've run the Superman type business model, right? Where like literally it's very key dependent type person. And one of the things that I've looked at is that, okay, great. I've become an absolute like fanatical individual around productivity and performance of what a human being is capable of doing. 
And the interesting thing that literally that I've now really tuned into in the last year or two is really about trying to make sure that I've got much more dedicated switch out time. Right. So that literally when I work, I work with a very high level of intensity, but when I'm out of work- You're off. I'm completely out of that time. And have you planned all this, Josh, for the year? Yeah, so um, Mark Benioff, the CEO of Salesforce, says that literally um, he reckons that 60% of your calendar should be unscheduled. Now, that wow. freaks the hell out of me, me too. I'm like 100% <laughs> oh, scheduled, mate. So guess what? I've now scheduled unscheduled time. Oh, okay, yeah. right. So you've got an appointment in your calendar that says unscheduled, unscheduled. time. So okay, Saturday so mornings. You're blocking it off. Saturday mornings between 8 and 11, I'm loose. Oh, I'm oh, so loose with my out, time. <laughs> <It's> watch <laughs> out. But the interesting conversation is that, okay, great. So I've got a, a lovely walk that I like to do from my house over the Anzac Bridge, goes around, um, you know, to Circular Quay. Yeah. And it's beautiful around Brangaroo. And it takes about an hour and 45 or two hours and 10, depending on how you're feeling. But an hour and 45, then you can catch the ferry back. Yeah. And great. it costs you nothing. Yeah. But you get sunshine, you get to see some amazing things, some incredible architecture, some of the best parts of Sydney, and you're in a position that naturally you get a bit of time to just reflect and refresh. Mm. And often I will say, and you've been on that walk with me to great friends, it's like, hey, you know, Sundays, if you feel like going for a walk, I'm going to do that. So come join. Yeah. And just get some sunshine and just, you know, have a bit of a chat about life. And that's often where the, some of the best ideas, in fact, the idea for this podcast did. came out of that walk. It did Imagine too. if we did it again. Uh, exactly. <laughs> so, 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 and that's that whole idea is that literally... You know, realize that ultimately I've had an always on thing. And Phil Harris said to me, he goes, man, at the end of the day, 208 events a year, you expect to be playing Roger Federer grade tennis or Josh Fegan grade training for 208 days a year. Yeah, what Roger Federer doesn't, healthy, yeah. he doesn't expect that, man. He's expecting 100 days of our ultimate performance and 265 days in rehab, refresh, retraining, time off out, out from the game. Yeah. And so what I'm trying to get you to think about is that literally don't think in these big blocks, thinking much more specific sprints, with much more dedicated time out, so then you can go to perform at your absolute best. Yeah, it reminds me of a, a book by Tim Grover called Winning. Yeah. Where he said that, uh, you know, NBA players, Michael, he, he trained Michael Jordan, Jordan and Kobe yeah. Bryant and whatnot, and he spoke about um, how they play 82 regular season games plus finals, Yeah, but they have an off-season. Yeah. Being in business, there's yeah. never an off-season. Yeah. So if we don't structure that off-season, the off-season will actually take care of us. 